it is four o'clock and we still have four interesting sessions for you to come. Our next speaker is Alexander Weber, who is the product manager of networking machine operation at Balov. Alexander will introduce you IO-Link Wireless as an addition to 5G. If you have any questions for Alexander, please feel free to write them in the chat and we will answer them at the end of the session. Welcome, Alexander. Thank you very much. Hello and welcome to my session, which is called Wireless Communication on the Last Mile, IO-Link Wireless as an addition to 5G. Before I start, I would like to go through the content of today's presentation, which is divided into three main topics. First is the wireless technology within industry. As you can imagine, it's slightly different from what you are expecting to have in consumer products. On the second hand, I would like to go through the technical comparison between, as mentioned, IOLink Wireless and the special derivative of 5G, which is called ultra-reliable low-latency communication. And I would like to finish my presentation with an implementation or the coexistence of both wireless technologies that are slightly different. So before I'll start, I would like to teaser a bit about the wireless technology. Most of you are quite common with wireless technology in your daily life. So while having a smartwatch, for instance, that's getting connected with your mobile or with your car, but also with screens if you're in a meeting that are connected with your computer, for instance, but also in your vehicles. So while daily driving to work or to friends, your phone is directly connected to your car and cars are connected in between. So this is totally common to all of us. We are used to that, but it's slightly different than what the industry is um, expecting and what the industry does have as a requirement for wireless technology. So when it comes to wireless technology in industry, as already mentioned, it's slightly different than what is expected in our daily life. So the first is a requirement which is called the machine availability. So it's intended to have no or very low machine downtime and in case of any malfunction to get a quick reaction and a very quick um, failure mode. The second is the reliability. So you need to have a reliable and deterministic communication between the master and the device or in between the whole system. And of course, the complexity shouldn't be that much. So you need to have a very quick and intuitive communication between the different devices. And in case of any replacement of different devices, it should get very easy. So that all comes to the demand to have a interoperability. That means no matter what kind of manufacturers behind the technology, all devices need to interact in a very good way that comes to a demand for having an industrial standard that has three main points that are very important. First is the flexibility, second is the uh, diversity, and third is the scalability that needs to be an important requirement to wireless technology. So when it comes to wireless technology, there are special demands, as already mentioned, but also special behaves of the users. HMS did a special analysis in 2019 and they has been asked up to 50 experts from international companies. So what they brought up is that 54% of them need the implementation for remote supervision, but also for remote control. 34% of them use that technology mainly for IIoT communication but also 58% mentioned that they want to have a very reliable and stable system against any faults. That is the main target. But what are typical applications for wireless technologies? We, especially in the factory automation, differ between three use cases. First use case is mainly the dynamic applications such as robot arms or transport system, any very dynamic movements. On the second hand, we do have fixed applications. Just imagine there are harsh environments and devices or um, topics that needs to get encapsulated, but also um, supervision systems or retrofitting. 
That means if you have an existing machinery that needs to get implemented with additional sensors such as um, condition monitoring sensors. And also mobile application such, uh, such as decentralized toolings, but also remote controls or AGVs. So these are the different application types of wireless technology within a factory automation. Now let's talk a bit about the technical comparison. I would like to start with the IOLink wireless technology first of all, and I divide it into five points that are important to get a better understanding on the technology itself. First is the transmission. iLink Wireless has a very big advantage. It has a transmission rate of 2.4 gigahertz. But this could be also a disadvantage because this is a well-known and very often used transmission rate for Bluetooth, but also for Wi-Fi. But on the other hand, iLink Wireless is able to provide a cycle time of five milliseconds, which is very important for factory automation and control applications. The distance between mass and device is typically given in a physical way by the transmission, which is 10 up to 20 meters, it's really depending on the industrial surrounding. The quality itself, and this is an important information as well for the reliability, is a packet error rate of 10 minus 9. This is three times better than what is typically in the market with a Bluetooth system that has uh, 10 minus 3. But also the number of devices are important for a machinery that not just have one sensor but multiple sensors. You're able to provide the communication between master and device of up to 40 devices with a master. In roaming there could be up to 120 devices available. So what are the advantages? Just frankly spoken, the big advantage is the license-free transmission rate of 2.4 gigahertz. You could call it like a minimal invasive solution because you can implement Arlink Wireless in every surround. You can implement it in every machine without any additional cost for the transmission. On the second hand, it's quick. You do have a trans, uh, um, um, cycle time of five milliseconds, which is important to get also communication from a sensor to a PLC. And on the other hand, it's reliable, which is also important for wireless technology as it has the same packet error rate than a tra um, traditional IOLink wired solution. On the other hand, we do have 5G in the derivate ultra reliable low latency communication. We have the same five different points that are the transmission. Here it is not that easy because depending on the regulation of the country of origin, for instance, the transmission rate is differently. So there is no given transmission all around the globe. The cycle time is in that special derivative to theoretically one millisecond cycle time. The distance could be up to one kilometers. So a bigger distance depending on the different technology. The quality is slightly lower than with Arlink Wireless. It's a packet error rate of 10 minus 5 milliseconds. And uh, there are maximum up to 1000 devices in a square kilometer. The main advantages of 5G are first of all the range as given we could have a distance between single devices of up to one kilometers so you can use it all around one plant for instance. The network load is higher than for Arlink Wireless it's 10 times higher so you can also add it to devices that has a higher data bandwidth and you're able to have a scalability. Just imagine by up to 1000 devices in a square kilometer, you're able to have a very huge ecosystem with 5G devices, so sensors or actuators. Just on a few to show the comparison between each. As mentioned, latency is one compared to five milliseconds. The packet error rate is 10 minus five compared to 10 minus nine. The payload, is 20 byte for 5G, but only two byte for IOLink wireless. And the range is one kilometer for 5G compared to maximum 20 meter for IOLink wireless. But just while giving all that hard facts, I also want to mention that the applications are completely different. Just by giving a few to the costs per chip, 
IOLINK wireless is 10 times cheaper than 5G. Main reason for that is that we are working on existing technologies that are given with other 2.4 gigahertz um, wireless chips or wireless tracks and 5G is completely new. So you can also imagine that the devices that are getting implemented with the several technology needs to have different worth of itself. But I think this is what brings us to the last point, which is the implementation of each system, but also the coexistence between both systems. I think if you are a designer of a machine or if you're an engineer that is implementing the technology to your plant, there are typically five key questions that you have to ask yourself, first of all, before implementing the technology. First is, what's the system performance? I already mentioned that there are different performances for the technologies. Second is, what kind of application do I have and where do I need what kind of technology? But also the frequency, is it available for us? Do we need to pay any license cost? And that brings us to the overall, the total cost of ownership, but also the range between devices or the range that I need to provide with a wireless ecosystem. So when it comes to that questions, I think it's also important to mention where is the difference between both. 5G is mainly given for real-time or control application. Whether IOLINK Wireless also provides real-time with the five milliseconds, but it's mainly for condition monitoring or for analog on, or binary signals. On the second hand, we do have devices such as servo drives, frequent converters, even robots. So these are all devices with a higher data bandwidth that are perfectly suited for 5G. In case of Arlink Wireless, these are devices such as optical or inductive sensors or even actuators. So all devices that has a lower data bandwidth of just, for instance, two bytes. And on the other side, the range is important. Just imagine you could do the within the whole plant to have the range between two single devices with one kilometer of 5G. In Arlink Wireless, we are just talking about the lower range between machines or just within a machine. So as I said, the minimal invasive solution. That brings us to the point that Arlink Wireless is for mainly cost sensitive devices, such as lower cost sensors. And 5G is for the higher cost devices, such as frequency converters, robots, that are also requiring a higher data bandwidth. Just by having a few at the automation pyramid, that, that makes it quite easy to explain. If you have a look at the control layer and going down to the master level, we do have two different layers for 5G, for a robot, for instance, as an embedded or via modem system, and IOLINK wireless with a direct master for Profinet instance or Ethernet IP. And then on the device level on, or the device layer, we are differing between the servo drives, frequency converters. And on the other hand, it's mainly hubs or sensors, actuators like optical and inductive fonts. The binary layer, so the sensor layer, is something that hasn't been equipped and is also not the intention to get that equipped with 5G. So this is mainly directly within the machine, so the communication on the last mile that is getting done with Arlink Wireless. That's all from my side for now, and I'm very happy to get any question from your side. Thank you very much. Thank you, Alexander, for that brief overview over Arlink Wireless. So let's have a look on the questions from the chat. Are there Ball of IOLINK masters and sensors already available? I suppose the question is about the, the wireless yeah, masters sure. and sensors. Not yet. This is a very good and interesting question. We are hardly working on that in order to provide a system. Right now we are also kind of um, um, behind the technical specification. So the specification has been done, but right now there is the test spec that needs to get finalized. The information right now is that the test specs will be finalized by end of 2020. And up on that time, we are able to bring products to the market that are also stamped as an official industrial standard and graded product. Thank you. I have another question. Will and can IOLINK wireless um, also be implemented in every sensor or actuator? Also a good question. 
in fact, that is the initial plan. So while starting with R-Link, for instance, we started with an R-Link master, and as there hasn't been that much IO-Link devices, we started with IO-Link hubs, as most of you should know. And the hubs are able to implement single um, sensors and um, actuators that are getting converted to IO-Link and given to the master layer as an IO-Link signal. So the plan is to have IO-Link wireless devices as well, but we would like to start with the so-called bridge. So you can equip an IO-Link device, put it to the bridge, and the bridge is communicating wireless to the master. Or on the other hand, we are also providing hubs, that, that is the target, where you can plug sensors and actuators to the hub, and they are getting provided IO-Link wireless via the hub. Okay, thank you. There's another question coming from our chat. How can Balov assure wireless reliability inside industrial environment? This is um, an important question because when we started with the wireless technology, we always knew about the behave of the industrial customers. They think the reliability is most important. This is why there are mechanisms behind IOLink Wireless that are providing that reliability in terms of the packet error rate. We call that the so-called frequency hopping in a, a triple redundancy. So we are sending three packages with the same content in that given five milliseconds on different uh, frequencies. And so even if there are other wireless technologies such as Bluetooth or Wi-Fi, there is no collision of the communicated packages or even if there is a collision with a triple redundancy, we are providing that given reliability. And just to mention, the reliability of iLink Wireless is exactly the same than iLink Wired. Okay, thank you. Do you strive uh, for getting rid of cables within the industrial automation, like maybe <laughs> Apple did with the audio jack in the smartphones? Well, this is, this is an, uh, a nice target, but I think that would be a, a bit ridiculous. I, I, I don't think that we are able and that we are on the path to get rid of cables, but it will be a good addition to cables. Just imagine every surrounding where we do have um, cables that are breaking with dynamic applications or where it is very difficult to enclose any cables, Arlink Wireless is perfect. But on the other hand, if you have a machinery that is static and where you do have a bunch of cables where there is no problem with the cable, I think we will still have a cabled version for the next decades. So we don't strive to get rid of cables, but we see it as a very important addition for applications where cable is quite tough. Okay, and uh, one uh, last question. Can you extend the range with other wireless radios? We are able to do that. This is called roaming. So we can be able, this is given by the specification, to put three masters in a row and a device, for instance, the R-Link wireless device that is going through the range of the first master is getting disconnected, so-called unpaired on that side and paired with the next. So you still have the reliability, you still have the cycle time and you can enlarge your distance to up to 60 meters within that ecosystem of three masters and up to 120 devices. Thank you, Alexander, for this interesting news and thanks for answering all these questions. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you all for listening. We will have a short break and we will be right back at 4.30 with our next session. Thank you. <laughs>